Welcome to our first remote learning experience. Um, this is the first time I've, I've done screen sharing, so this is new to me, so bear with me while I fumble my way through this and try to make it work for you. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, I've not had a chance to check conference with Jeanne yet um, from Canvas so that we could do this live. She's obviously swamped right now with all sorts of requests, so I'm going to wait on that a bit, but I'll keep you guys informed. If you guys are fine with this YouTube version of tutorials, um, which allows you to kind of do this on your own time, and of course stop the video and make sure you understand what I'm doing, that's fine. Uh, I can see how that would be more beneficial, but I would like to try to do at least one real-time session in the near future using conference. Now, if one of you is willing and able to test that with me, uh, you can email me, we can set up a time, and then we can test it out, see how it works. That way we can actually do a real-time tutorial, uh, which would also enable us to use the chat function. You guys can ask questions at the same time, um, so that in between chunks of the tutorial I can stop and see if anybody has asked any questions. I think that would be useful. Um, but in the meantime, we can, we can stick with the YouTube tutorials if you think that's going to work for you. Also, I am still waiting to hear back from IT about getting everyone the Photoshop program for their personal use for the next two months for free, which they seem to be willing to do. It's just, again, they're swamped, and who knows how long that's going to take. So in the meantime, if you are willing and able and you want to look at it as a lab fee or something, uh, you can actually sign up and pay for one month of Photoshop. It would be like 20 bucks, uh, And then I can put a post in the announcement section and share this link with you. It instructs you on how to opt out of the plan that you set up for monthly payment and then it gives you free access for two months which is pretty not pretty awesome. I mean it's it's similar to what we're going to be doing anyway um, but this way we could just get on with it and get moving on what we want to do here. So what I'm going to show you today is sort of like an in-betweener thing. It's a, it's just a test. It's something I wanted to show you guys eventually. And Michael brought up that he thought I should have shown this to you sooner. And, you know, maybe he's right. Uh, but I just figured that since most of what we were doing was photo manipulation to that point, not really image creation, I would wait on this. Um, and it happened to work out because I think this is going to be a good first tutorial for us to do together in this format. Now, those of you who do not have access to a Wacom tablet, which I'm guessing is most of you, um, it's a bummer. I really wanted to show you guys how those work and how fun they are, but this exercise I'm going to show you and pretty much everything else we're going to do can be done using a trackpad or a mouse as well. It's just that the Wacom tablet is so nice and they're so fun to use. I'm going to do this exercise using my trackpad today. Uh, because the driver is outdated for the Wacom tablet I wanted to use. I have a newer one that I could use, but it's at home. I'm actually elsewhere in my studio space uh, doing this tutorial. So I will do this with a trackpad to show you that it can be done that way. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So what I'd like you to do first is go ahead and open up Canvas. Go into the file section, you should find something called interior template. This is what it looks like. So going into Canvas, going under files, interior template, it's a JPEG. And then you can just take this and drag and drop it into Photoshop and it'll open it up for you automatically. And you can close Canvas. And here we go. So I actually drew all of this in Photoshop without any kind of a reference. I just kind of made it up as I went along. And I was using exclusively the brush tool, a little bit of the pen tool, and the elliptical marquee tool. And maybe I might have used the rectangular marquee tool a little bit, but for the most part it was just the brush. And the brush can be used to create straight and angled lines. So if we go up under view and go to fit on screen, and get a nice view of everything. And what I'd like you to do is just create a new layer on top of the one we already have. And we're just going to do a little bit of practice here. So go over to your brush. Click on the brush tool 
make sure it's the brush and under your options bar I have it set at 15 right now that's about where we want it 15 and the hardness is all the way up we won't we don't want these fuzzy edges we want a nice sharp hard line for what we're doing opacity is at 100 percent so we're in good shape there you also want to be able to see your rulers for something like this when you're doing something architectural or geometric it's good to have rulers and guides that you can pull so remember you can go under view and bring up your rulers and then you can automatically pull guides from the side I'm going to pull a guide right now I'm just going to put it right here kind of running through the middle of everything it's a little bit lower than center I'm using this template that I drew as a guide we're just going to draw on top of it and then later if you want to do your own you can I'm also going to pull a guide a vertical guide in the other direction line that up with the sort of the relative middle right about there so what I've done here by creating quadrants and putting these guides in is I've told myself where my vanishing point is going to be and in perspective the vanishing point is the point to which all right angle lines vanish or recede so I'm gonna come in here and just put a little point right there pretty close to where the two guides are crossing so everything is going to vanish to that point or pretty close to it there's a little multi-planar perspective going on here I shifted things around a little bit a little bit but for the most part everything should vanish to that point so here's something pretty neat we're going to go all the way over here to the left on our horizontal guide I'm going to click a point and I'm going to hold in the shift key and drag directly across and that's how you get straight lines and holding in shift remember what the shift key does you can use it to uh, keep a perfect circle or square when you're dragging a selection with the marquee tool you can hold shift when you're dumping um, one project into another in order to center it shift kind of holds things in place and in this case it enables us to draw a straight sharp lines I'm going to do one going up and down as well I'm just going to kind of stick in the middle here where my vanishing point was I'm going to click and I'm going to hold in the shift key drag down and then drag back up and let go of both now I've quartered this and I've made these nice straight lines come back into the center again click your vanishing point just click on it once don't hold anything yet and come up here into your upper left corner hold in shift and then click a second point see what that did gave us a nice straight diagonal line and you can see where some of my interior is a little bit off uh, I think I, I did some transforming uh, after I did this to make it seem a little bit more multi-planar so I've got that I'm gonna come back to the center again click a point and this is just practice click a point where the vanishing point is and then come up here into the upper right hold in shift click another point very nice so now what we could do is we could just command J to duplicate this and then edit transform flip vertical and then you'll want to jump to your move tool just tap V and then you can use the arrow keys to nudge that down so that our horizon lines match up and there we go and you could command E to merge down so now you have this radiant template that you can use to locate objects to place things Okay, pretty nice. So what you might want to do with this is transform it, Command T, and then just drag your boxes. You might have to reposition this, by the way. Drag your boxes down and line them up with the interior archway between these two rooms. See that line that's running through on the floor that's pretty well placed 
I'll hit return on that. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to put a square box around that template I just created like so. My ants are marching. If you hold in the control key, see it changes my cursor. I get that little notepad next to it. I can come up here and I can click on the ants marching and go down to stroke. I have it set at 15. Color is black. Hit OK. And then Command D to deselect. So there's the interior room. What's beyond the room that we're in. It's got a box around it. And there is a lower eye line here that I could probably put in. Maybe I'll go over here and do that now. Jump to my paintbrush. I'm off to the edge. Just following that same guideline I already had set. Hold in Shift and drag across. Then I want to build what's already what I can see here. I'm just going to go right back over what's already there. I'm going to come right here underneath the left pillar to the left of the door. Click a point, hold in shift, drag up until I reach that diagonal line. Click another point, hold in shift, drag across until I reach this diagonal. Click another point, hold in shift, drag down. There I've made that interior archway. And you can just go over these lines as much as you want. And I click another point and drag across. This is good practice. Just so that this starts to feel maybe a little bit more natural. Click a point there. Let me do one on this side as well. Click a point, drag down. Now the doorway. Maybe we could just do that with a rectangular marquee. What do you think? Let's do that. Let's just create a square there. Same thing as before. Hold in control so you get that little notepad next to your cursor. Click on the ants marching. Stroke. Hit OK. Deselect. So I have some diagonals in this room I need to take care of. Jumping back to my brush tool, if I just tap the letter B, got my brush tool activated again. I'm going to go right over here to the left, click a point, hold in shift, and then click this point here. And then I'm still holding in shift. I'm going to go down and click this point here. And then I'm going to come back up to that secondary horizon line, still holding in shift, click another point. Let's do that over here on the other side. Let's go the opposite direction. Click a point at the base. Come over here. Hold in shift. Click another point. Come up here. Still holding in shift. Click this point. And then I'm going to go over here. I have a lampshade in the way, so I'm just going to go to the edge of that and click another point. And you can come in here if you want to. Hold in shift and oops. I'm going to click a point here, hold in shift, drag across. I'm going to do another one below it, click a point, hold in shift, drag across, and I'm going to do one over here. Click, hold in shift, drag to the edge of my lampshade. I put in a little doormat in here too, so I'll just do that real quick. Click a point, hold in shift, click, still holding in shift, click, still holding it in, Click, there I have like a little welcome mat or something in there. <clears throat> now I put this sort of archway in. And I did that with the pen tool. So just as a little refresher, I want to jump back to the pen tool. I'm going to put in a node right here. I'm going to come to the center of my door, click a node, and drag across. You can hold in shift to keep that straight to get that arch. And I can release my, uh, my mouse click and then release shift afterwards. I'm going to come back down over here. And just to make sure that 
I'm in the right spot, I can pull a guide, run it through the node to make sure that I'm placing this in the right spot. There we go. So now I have that pen arch, and I'm going to use that control again. Make sure this was a path, if it was a shape, that probably didn't work right for you. Uh, always check your option bar if something's amiss. It needs to be a path. I'm going to hold in the control key, click on my pen path, make it a stroke path. Uh, and I want this to be my brush, so hit OK, and then hit return. So you've got the arch carved out there. So that pretty much well takes care of that interior room. Looks like I could do more to the door here, which I did. It's up to you if you want to take that any further. Let's jump back to the brush tool. Now I need to come back to this corner, click a point, come up to the upper left corner, hold in shift, click a point, do the same thing on the right side. Click a point, come up to my upper right corner, hold in shift, click that point. We're just building these, the walls. There's the, the ceiling, the separation between this wall and the ceiling. Now I'm kind of like drawing through these objects like I have x-ray vision. So I'm going to do the same thing on, on the bottom. Click a point in the lower left, come down into the corner, hold in shift, click that point. Let's do it on the other side in the corner, come down into the lower right corner, hold in shift, click a point. It's pretty convincing uh, one point perspective so far. I can I feel the depth. It looks like I can walk through this space. Okay, so now we can deal with some of these objects and I'm actually going to do those in another layer. So go ahead and make another layer. And let's do this table. Let's go down here to the lower right corner and click a point. Hold in shift, click another point. Still holding in shift, click. Still holding in shift, click another point. Still holding it in, click another point. And we got the top of our table. So let's keep the edge straight. I'm going to click a point, hold in shift, and drag down. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm not, I'm not dragging, actually. I'm still holding shift, though. And I'm going to click this point. And then I'm going to come back up here and click that point. So I've got the top of the table. Let's do these legs. Let's go here, hold in shift, and drag to get that straight line. Come over here, click a point, hold in shift, drag straight up. I went a little past where I should have there. Let's try that again. Click a point, drag up. There we go. I'm coming back down here to this corner, and I'm going to come up at an angle, hold in shift, click a point, come up here, Still holding in shift and click another point. So that's like the interior leg of my table. i do the same thing over here. This time holding in shift and dragging down. Clicking a point to the edge. Seeing just like the slightest amount of the front of that leg. I'm going to click it oblique angle here and then come up. And it's not perfect. Let's, let's, let's back that up a little bit. Trying to get it a little bit straighter. I'm actually going to click and drag that time. So sometimes it's better to draw the line by clicking and dragging because you'll get a straighter line than just clicking a point and then another point because it's going to be uh, a perfect diagonal to that point but you may not be perfect in where you set your point uh, when you eyeball it which nobody's perfect. We do the best we can. I wouldn't hold it against you if something was a little wonky in a project that's okay. What matters is that you understand the concept. So I'm going to drag one more dark line underneath this table just to solidify the bottom a little bit. So now I've got that coffee table in there. Let's also do, let's do this TV table I have over here. Let's go back here. 
click a point and hold shift and drag down to the floor. And then I can come over here, still holding shift, I released my, my mouse click and I'm just going to click again. These lines are pretty straight so I can follow them pretty easily. Click another point, click another point, I'm going to click a point up here to there, still holding shift, click a point, so I connect the dots, holding in shift, click a point, I'm going to come down here, to my corner here, and click two points again, this section we're going to click here, and then hold in shift, click a point, you're going to get real sick of hearing me say that, I'm sure, click a point. I just put another one right here where I sort of put these doors on the front. This time I'm going to drag down. I'm going to click and drag down to keep it straight. Click a point, hold in shift. There we go. Picking the top right about there, hold in shift. And then from here I'm going to draw, I'm going to click a point, hold in shift, and draw straight down. I'm going to do another one of those here. Click and hold. Hold in shift, drag straight down. How about the TV? Let's do the TV. Click a point here, hold in shift, drag down. Let go of your mouse kick, click, go over to another point, click. I don't like that, it's too straight. Back that up. In fact, I'm actually going to clear my guide so I can see this a little bit better. That guide's kind of bothering me. Clicking my point, come down here at an angle, click. Up here, click, still holding shift, here, click, and I've got the side of it. Click this point, hold in shift, move the edge, still holding in shift, I'm going to drag straight down, and then still holding in shift, click over to that point to finish off the shape of the TV. The base can be done in a similar fashion, click, drag, with shift, and click, drag, with shift, click, drag down with shift, and then here I'm going to click a point to connect the base, click another point right there, click a point here, doing connect the dots again, click a point, click a point, here, here, and there. Now I've got a base. I'm going to put the screen on, click a point here, drag straight down. This is actually off, you can probably tell. I'm going to bring it down a little further. Click a point right here. That looks good. Better than the last one. Holding in shift, dragging straight up, and then releasing my mouse click and coming over and clicking that point. And there I have my TV screen. All right, let's take care of this couch. I'm going to start right here. Click my point, hold in shift, drag straight down. Release my mouse click. Come over here to the corner, click. Come to this corner and click. Now that one I probably could have drawn straight across, but it is at a slight angle. You can probably tell by the negative space down there. Um, so now I'm going to drag this straight up. Click and drag. Click a point, click another point. Now these are lumpy because I actually I drew them freehand. I did that on purpose. Originally I had it just this solid shape. So you can decide if you want to try to connect the dots here. All I'm doing is I'm holding shift and just clicking points along the edge. And then here I can go straight across. I want this to bulge up a little bit, so I'm going to click some more points, still holding shift, until I get back to that point of origin. Clicking a point here, coming over here, and drawing that line. Now I'm going to hold it in, hold my click in, hold shift in, drag straight down. I'm going to do the same thing back here. Oops. With this arm of the couch, click, and then hold shift, drag back. And I can do the connect the dots again, clicking, 
my points while holding in shift all the way over to there. I'm holding in shift this whole time every time I'm clicking a new point. Now from here I can draw straight out and then again it's rounded so clicking a point as I go around and then this line I can draw straight back. The separation here in the couch and just hold in the shift key and drag down. I went a little too far. Let's try this again. And then here, click, drag back. There's another angle. Click a point. Do that. And then this one straight up and down. Click and drag down. And we got my couch in there. And then we got the window back here. I'm going to click a point here and here for the top. From here I can drag straight down. And then I can the point behind there. I have another one right here. Click your point, hit shift, hold in the shift key and drag down. Now it's very repetitive. Um, but once you do it a whole bunch, you get real comfortable with it, and this actually becomes a lot of fun. Um, clicking a point on the end here, dragging straight down. Do another one on the interior. And then another one. Oops. Same thing with this part. Click, drag down. I'm overlapping stuff a little bit. I'm I'm going to start getting careless here, but that's okay. Let's speed this along a little bit. And then here, <coughs> we're connecting the dots again. So I click that upper point, hold in the shift key, click another point, and do the same thing over here. Click, hold in shift, click. Point to point, connect the dots, click, hold in shift, click a point, still holding in shift, click another point. So now the window has like a ledge to it, it looks a little bit 3D. Okay, so now we got the lamp over here, haven't done that yet. Hold in shift, oops, click a point first, hold in shift, drag down. Same thing on the other side, click a point, hold in shift, drag down. And I'm going to do this for the sides, but first I need to pull out my elliptical marquee tool and drag an ellipse that's roughly the size I always forget to do this. How is my keyboard? That way I can do this with uh, using the space bar to move things around. Uh, drag your ellipse so it's kind of lined up. Remember, if you hold in the space bar, you can move it. That's pretty good. And then hold in the control key. So we change our cursor again. Click on the marching ants. Stroke 15. Looks good. That might need moved over just a little bit. But I don't know. It's not too bad. I guess we'll deal with it. Command D to deselect. Coming back to my brush tool, I'm just going to come over here to the edge of my lampshade, click a point, hold in shift, click, still holding in shift, click. I can make that top rounded with another ellipse, but I'm not going to bother right now. Symbolically speaking, as long as you get the gist of this, uh, you'll understand it. It looks like a lamp. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I did all of that, and then up here, got this sort of makeshift ceiling fan. It, it, uh, these look more like bow doors than uh, fan blades, but I use the elliptical marquee for this. And I just pulled it and stretched it into place. Same thing as before, holding control, click, stroke, deselect. Then I actually duplicated and free transformed, uh, but that was 
Oh, I guess I have that in its own layer. So let's try another one on top of it. And just drag one down like that. And you hold in the space bar so you can move it over a little bit. Stretch it out. Another stroke there. And then these ores I use the pen tool for. So you just come in here and create your nodes. You know where everything's going to be. Kind of want to come on the outside of these dark lines. And that needs to be up a little bit higher. So remember, if you want to move any one node, if you hold in the command key, you can move it up a little bit, free of the other ones, and then continue your path. And then with the control function, you can make it a stroke path. Oh, that didn't take. Oh, that would be why. I didn't deselect my previous elliptical marquee. Hey, we all make mistakes. I'm going to try that again. Make my way around this oar shaped fan blade. Now, this should work. Control, stroke path. There we go. Hit return, and you've got one of your, your four ore shapes. Um, but that's the idea. So I think you probably understood what I was showing you. If you didn't, um, you can always email me, and I'll attempt to explain it a better way. Hopefully you were able to work along with me, and if not, hopefully you'll be able to do this in the future on your own. What's nice about being able to do this is once you have a template to work on top of, uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So, oh, there's our old exercise. So I'm going to show you what I did with this. I lit it. Now, I turn these off. You can see this was the original background, and. I worked on top of it. I did a, uh, what I did is I added a. Now do it over here just so you get an idea. I'm going to add a new layer. Edit. Fill. 50% gray. Then I'm changing my blending mode in my layers palette to multiply, so I can see through it. And then I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm changing the blending mode on this to overlay. We'll do this again later, later when we do uh, some digital painting. And now, with my brush, what I can do is, with the black and white, I'm going to change my brush size, by the way, and I'm also going to make it softer. So you can see this. I can come in here now, and on top of this gray, I can paint what's going to end up being like shadow area. Now, that's really dark. So if we change the opacity, which is a good idea, because then you'll be able to build it up a little bit at a time. I'm also going to make my brush bigger. There we go. So now you can paint in value, painting in areas of light and shadow, uh, depending upon where your light source is. I was going to put a shadow behind all of this. Maybe my light source is the TV, which in the case of this example it is. I made the TV my brightest light source. It's reflected in the window. It's reflected on part of the, the table and the couch. But this back room is very dark. You don't have to do it that way. I mean, maybe your light source is coming from outside. Maybe it's uh, coming from out of the windows. Maybe it's morning. Or maybe the lamp back here is your diffused light source. It's kind of nice to build something like this and then spend time creating different light sources and see um, if you understand the, the play of light and shadow. But that's a little bit more higher order. That's more of like a drawing thing than just learning how to use this program. But this is a very artistic way of using it, uh, despite all the straight 
lines. And as you can see, once I sort of patched in some values, I went on top of it with a fill color, and then I duplicated that layer and I used a filter, a filter that I like called Cutout, that sort of stylizes the shapes of all the uh, the cast shadows and the light and stuff like that. And then I could work on top of this. Maybe I could draw somebody sitting here on the couch or you know, put a ghost in the background because it's kind of spooky. So that's the idea of what I just you know wanted to show you today. Pretty simple. There's your template we're working on top of. Try your own. It's pretty fun. I gotta say, I, I enjoy doing this. this. is like maybe the fifth time I've run myself through this exercise just for fun, just to show you guys what you can do. So that's it. That's our exercise for today. So between now and the next time I do one of these uh, tutorials, it'd be nice if you took some time to attempt to do this on your own, if you can acquire Photoshop. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Uh, I'm going to stop this recording now, if I can figure out how to do that. I think I have to click on QuickTime and go under screen recording. Yep, and then I can stop it. So uh, that's it, guys. So I hope that was worked out well for you guys. I hope you could see everything I was doing. You could hear me, that it made sense. Please email me and let me know what you thought about this whole thing, and we'll just keep going and keep trying to make it better as we go. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.